Welcome to Ever Beyond 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 Broadcast through the Wolf Spirit Media Network. Be prepared to leave your belief systems behind as we go beyond teachers, beyond gurus, beyond duality, ever beyond beyond. Please join us in the chat room at www.wolfspiritradio.com forward slash listen. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Hello, hello. September the 10th, 2017. Wow. Yeah, the year has just whacked by. Here we go. <laughs> the month nine. Anyway, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning from uh, from whatever perspective you have on this spinning globe. Um, tonight, my guest is uh, going to be speaking on multi-dimensions, uh, a dimensionally aware young gentleman, um, almost needing, you've been, you've been on the show before, um, always comes out with uh, some great stuff. Uh, will, uh, hopefully, uh, be cleansed and refreshed with the, with a new burst of, uh, high dimensional, uh, information. Informationally dense, but, uh, light of heart. My guest, Sean Bond. Good evening. How are you? Hello. It's great to be on again. Uh, how have you been? Ah, well, it's been, um, a very interesting summer. Um, and, uh, particularly this moment, this, this very moment, you know, this weekend, <laughs> I was just standing with, uh, two of my friends in my kitchen this evening and, uh, you know, each of us are standing there like, what the hell just happened? Uh, all of us are just, uh, you know, <laughs> we're, all, we're all kind of heartbroken, you know, we're all bro- broken up. Um, uh, you know, every single one of them, all at the same time. There's a lot of it going on. There's a lot of grief and loss. And I believe it's always to do with a higher dimensional reality. And I hope uh, that uh, you'll be able to bring some of that higher dimensional understanding to the situations that are going on. Because... I'm presuming this is not just happening in in uh, locally in Scotland. This this is more is kind of a uh, you know I've got my finger on the pulse beat of a global phenomenon. So do do you want, should we start with that? What's with all the breakup? <laughs> um, okay, let's see. So like with the term breakup and how you could uh, apply it to multi. Um, Multiple existences all around the planet. Uh, let's see, breakup. Well, um, there seems to be a lot uh, going on on the planet, um, as well as off planet in the solar system and the system's interaction with other systems uh, involving lots of karmic resolution as a long-term chess move and that going down the micro layers. Um, so... Uh, where can we start with that? Um, the hurricanes, um, in their base, in how they manifest, there's multi, uh, multiple lines of influence into the manifestation besides what we know of with, uh, the weapon warfare as well as the, the, the weather psionics, uh, warfare through, uh, like weather witches and wizards. Um, and how they amplify things. There's also Earth's chess move with uh, the hurricanes, as well as her spiritual entourage and what they are used as as a technology. They do a lot of things all at once. Besides being a plethora of air elementals, lightning, plasma, uh, water, and um, a collective consciousness of existence that ha- can be... Um, very influential on the consciousnesses around them as well as the entire planet. And some of these are really big and are very um, 
actively used by a lot of the consciousness to resolve tons of karma all at once. Uh, you could uh, psionically project yourself into the hurricane and interact with the mystery schools of it psionically and resolve tons more karma than you would otherwise, as well as work with the existing structure of unity and the courts of equity that are sweeping through the physical, the etheric, the astral, the dream time in multiple bilocated existences of itself um, to clean out, clear out the dark energy, sweep it up like a uh, um, a vacuum, as well as demons, ghosts that are trapped in the sacred geometry system and uh, get like they are like um, when I look at it, it's, it's when you see the manifestation of it, it it um, it's going towards like peak points of uh, stagnation in the system that are keeping it going through the stealing of sh uh, lots and lots of energy through the people and the ghosts that are trapped there. So it gravitates towards the bigger places of that. Um, and I'm also curious as to like how many hurricanes have fully manifested here because I've tuned into quite a bit more than most times in hurricane season, which is interesting as they also interact with, um, energy vortexes of creation in, mm, energetic portals as well as even physical portals though i see uh that is being hard to believe though i do tune into it uh each hurricane bringing being used as a multi-faceted uh tool by earth to bring in uh species most of the like for example like hurricane irma I've been tuning into that more than most of the other ones because it does affect me more. So, like, is there, like, uh, anything affecting um, where you are right now? Uh, no, it's just a, just a general cloudy, depressed sort of uh, weather, which is normal. Uh, well, it's, it's September. It's Scotland. It's always normal, like uh, <laughs> dark, you know, weather. But um, it's fas fascinating. You were saying that, each of the hurricanes is a kind of mystery school stroke karmic vortex that allows you to pay off a lot of, this is like the, a great opportunity you're saying by yeah. facing the fears that you would have about a hurricane and what it could do to you to stand yes. in it and allow it to whatever has to happen to happen in order to uh, clear karma. Is that right? Mm. Oh, absolutely. It does so much, like very fast, like in, it's like, um, Earth's, like, th these ones were less influenced as, as they were in the past by, uh, weather warfare. They can morally try to change their direction at this point. Uh, but that's still waning and they get like a lot of blowback for even trying that because it like, it's, it, it's showing their chest moves. So, you know, they're constantly trying to replace their technology. Um, anyway, the, uh, yeah, uh, you, you can, your, your, uh, higher self is actually, uh, involved in psionically, karmically, uh, resolving a lot of things with, I, I think like three hurricanes right now, just, just so you know, and you can amplify that with your knowingness and intention and you can monitor it as well. And see if there's anything impeding you or if there's anything that needs your attention specifically uh, to, like, learn from it. Um, you can amplify your ability to work with uh, weather and uh, it's like that in that regard for the mystery school. Because uh, everyone can learn how to uh, influence, change direction, amplify, lessen, um, resolve bring to balance weather patterns that also reflect consciousness. Understanding the technology of water, uh, how your body can influence the programming of water and how 
much you need to scale that upwards and practice it because there's a leveling system to it and you can uh, learn all types of interesting abilities such as if you're like uh, needing of it. Like for instance, I, I went back and searched for all these different versions of me that are uh, good in that skill set like uh, weather witches or wizards, um, shamans, rainmakers, all, all, all the people that have like a entanglement with the consciousness of weather and whatever belief system they set up in an operating system. And then um, it, it seems to uh, carry over quite a lot of interesting technology uh, that uh, bleeds into my knowingness so I can work with weather at a higher uh, expression and I know more about what it's used for besides what it physically does, like such as rain, which can purify the land uh, by bringing new types of water into the place. Um, and the, if it's like thunderstorms that like energizes everything around and that pro, uh, programs it to n new levels as well as you, you might notice you feel really good during a thunderstorm. Um, the, there's also telepathic communication going on and there's the layers of the unseen and the consciousness of the elementals and what they do and what their missions are. And you can sync up and team up with versions of yourself that are doing that. The more, so there's layers and layers of more advanced technology and knowingness. Like if you were to find out that you had a version of yourself that used to exist on an island chain that, was working with other groups of beings that knew this technology and amplifying each other to for the pur main purpose of being the protectors of that island from devastating weather patterns that they could somehow redirect around their island or um, at least calm the the location uh, around the island and so like it, it, it's kind of like bringing i don't know the the weather is like it's like water it's shapeless formless it can it can flow through flow with the consciousness or against it and so if you're you're working with elementals and you uh it's not about dominating them or controlling it's about flowing with them so that they uh gain respect for you and will flow with you as well it's like a unity thing um and so you can let let it kind of like uh, like the eye of the hurricane, how it gets calm. You can kind of calm that in the direction that it comes through the area. And people have had to learn this. Otherwise, they would die kind of scenarios. And that kind of like puts you into that that kitchen of heat. So, that, you know. Uh, the, the cool thing is though, it's like, uh, which I'm still baffled at and I'm like, oh, is this real? Really? Oh, okay. Well, I'm barely able to, you know, prove this, but like, it's really cool to listen to. Um, like, uh, it's the hurricanes are Lincoln, like Ir Irma, for example, I've, I'm a, what I'm allowed to say based on clearance and what's not secret missions. And that's what I mean when I'm asking, uh, my higher self and ancestors, what I'm allowed to talk about. So that, that if everyone's not ready for it, but, um, uh, there, it syncs up with temporal portals that syncs up with other hurricanes that have existed in our past, like deep in the past where there are certain types of species existing on the planet more prevalent than there are now, or if they're in an extinction phase, then, it's bringing back extinct animals into existence. Um, in it depends on what they are. Like if they're more symbiotic, uh, Earth has like strategies with this, where she's syncing up at specific times when uh, the the way portals open the both on both ends of technology and synchronistic moments, as well as influencing the sea life to like uh, gravitate towards positions where they'll then be teleported seamlessly from one body of water to the other, like uh, water portal teleportation is really interesting technology. But uh, some species are like uh, m that we know about in our mythology as well as uh, fossil records, but we 
usually when we hear it from science, we'll just think that they're just big, dumb, dumb beast animals that uh, got extinct. But like in real reality, they're very interesting, and some of them are old, ancient. Some can uh, form past based on what they're doing with the planet in as a DNA technology lineage. They can become an immortal being or at least long living being and be like a psionic protector for the planet. And some of them transport backwards and forwards in time uh, by being in the mystery school of Earth and having telepathic communication with her and dream space and uh, like this big presence of dream protector for the seas or uh, astral or all kinds of interesting I see with these like uh, big uh, some of them are big predators like uh, megalodon or uh, um, the some there's older prehistoric ones too and it's just like uh, some interesting things that are being teleported in the sea like uh, not to like uh, get anyone in fear or anything the the the, the megalodons are more peaceful than people give them credit for and they mostly interact in deep sea underwater stuff so there's not to be fear of that also earth keeps them to a low level of breeding uh because they are known to take on a lot in the oceans like they're demon hunters they capture things and they resolve a lot um so they uh get aggressive through that influence and the things that attack them that also adds to their hormone um, secretion and uh, you, you know like a shark uh, I see it's a bit like eat, eating um, red meat and you know getting aggressive yeah what they say about it. all the different things that come to them through that too um, so they're kind of being limited in their breeding capacity but there's just some interesting things going on with some of the the species that have been extinct that are showing back up, as well as species that are coming, it's not just from the past. There are a little, it's more in the past though. The things that are coming to the future, especially with Irma, and I'm not tuning into all of them like um, intricately, uh, but there are some things coming from the future. I'm I'm gonna tune into that more. And it seems interesting why that would happen. So let, let's uh, just let's, let's just hold hold um, press the button on this one. Press the pause on this. So. These, uh, you're talking about hurricanes in the past and hurricanes in the present and hurricanes in the future. Kind of, I, oh my god, this is just like a Star Trek episode. Um, but they form a, or their, or a wormhole is forming them. <coughs> you could say it like that. But they're, they're creating Einstein Rosen bridges that allow things to time travel as large groups, presumably because they finished their evolution. So is this how is this the mechanism of it? Is this how oh, yeah. is is this the uh you know um the mechanism of ascension for some um some levels of being? Yeah, some levels of being like uh it's earth has different ways of bringing the, uh beings that she she sees on her timeline as being advantageous to hold on to and not like allowed to stop existing. So she'll make bubbles of reality meant for them, like in inner earth and other places so that they can go through the resolution process to the point where all her adopted species can function together in unity, which may take a long as time, but like, Hey, she, she loves us all and is willing to do that. Um, also she, she likes to collect them and like, she has like a whole interesting strategy where when, she empowers them to take sovereign free their all their free will and energy back. Um, that also lends them the abilities through the fortress of what we are doing here uh, to re- unite all versions of themselves and resolve not just their own but all versions of themselves karma here and uh, have like this unique, unimaginable. Uh, well, it's it's fun to imagine a uh, future that she's trying to paint uh, or at least bring to a possibility more and more each day. Uh, and so she she doesn't like she she'll like have one hurricane that like 
uh, captures a whole bunch like through vortexes and portals. And I like I'll, I'll, I you can use those uh, like Einstein Rosenbergs and other stuff. But there's just so you know, there's like lots and lots of different types of portal technology and many different types of energy amalgamation. It takes like whole lifetimes to fully understand portal portals, but you don't have to know everything about portals to use them um, or, or enter into them. But like, if you want to reproduce the ability to create them, it takes a large place of man's place of responsibility to hold that, protect it because so many beings want to steal it. They want a portal out of this place so bad. And um, so they're willing to steal it from almost anyone. So it starts shutting down in that quarantine effect until we can hold up that mantle place. Um, because that's one of the, like, like time travel and then portals is like the most sought after abilities. Um, uh, yeah. And so she like picks up a whole bunch of like cr- creatures, for instance, and then she won't have them all go to the same place. She'll have like some strategic understanding of where the best place for them to go and then where on the timeline is an opportunity for that and sometimes she'll make one and then she'll have like uh, all these different uh, synchronistic moments because she has a part of herself existing in no time that's able to process infinite amounts of information at once to create chess moves that best uh, strategize against all the other beings that have that same ability that want to be able to counter chess mover and it's like a constant flow of unpredictability that's the most uh effective strategy for her but also uh i don't know everyone uh, seems to flow around that with her uh for their betterment as well if they want so want to um i don't know i'm going a little off track uh but (laughs) what do you think well, it's it's just a, a a fascinating idea. Even so, these are conscious beings. Obviously, all the rotation has a sense of consciousness about it. Um, and it it feels yeah, it feels like you're saying as you're saying you know there are different agencies want these things to, to go somewhere and you know I'll go over here and it'll be fine. But and the storm is saying oh, yeah maybe not. Uh, you know, so, um, there, and there's also a feel that you know there are other parallel dimensions where greater disasters are happening, and this is a kind of spillover or energy release from those. Absolutely, uh, that's. I'm glad you brought that up. So, like, um, so like I, I filled out a little bit of my galactic newspaper style. I don't usually do this for shows, but I'm going to get more in the habit of it because people seem to like it. Um, Do you want to think I can, uh, start, yeah, I can start tuning to things based on subject matter bring up just in the moment. Uh, but, uh, Earth seems to be syncing up with, like, not just her resolving, but this entire universe and the multiverse. And the multiverse is, um, how it seems to theme things in resolution is like, it's trying to quarantine, it's more, um, higher clearance uh, existences of dimensions within realms, within uh, territory, within uh, solar systems, galaxies, universes, uh, to uh, separate those that are working in unity from those that need to go through a process of uh, learning to the point where even in the dar- um, the darker ends of the spectrum of consciousness experience you can like that which are the more harder difficulties to balance things in there is a balance there's always a balancing opportunity and choice point so that uh you can bring those unpolarized uh, i mean the uh those unbalanced polarized versions of darkness into mm, the balanced state of darkness which is like anti-darkness anti-evil that can like rebounce out of the darkness and transmute into light, which is the kind of effect that the universe wants to do with shaping everyone to becoming the antidote for evil, which is a interesting concept into itself. And 
seems to be in it because like source is a fractal of the source before it and it, it like even that beca- uh like uh se- separated and then created uh, another source and it goes up and down like very far and uh <laughs> express how far it goes but it, yeah and that it's inherited qualities of what it came from so it's in its quest to understand itself and spread into all different kinds of experiences of existence, uh, it shapes to understand all spectrums and to bring into a, har- a harmonistic equation where it doesn't seek to uncreate its bubbles or reality anymore, which seems to be a problem, um, and throwing off everything and uh, keeping everything into an unstate, uh, un balanced state of antithesis to source which we call evil and so we're like quarantining that down so all these uh thing as we resolve things because earth is like a center point for resolution and it's like uh held highly by the dark for like them seeing if this place wakes up it ends a lot of games for them so they want to keep this going as long as possible uh they're willing to give up other holds on other places to keep this going so that you'll often see that happen when people resolve things here very quickly other places will start resolving their stuff and then they'll culminate all their their karma and drama to here and other versions of us like you can see each of us as a spirit that has a tree of existence from all the different rides and existences we have through the multiverse that still some exist today and you will sometimes meet other branches of yourself. Hey, what's up? Uh, and uh, they, so when you resolve more of your stuff, they do too. And then they find that the rest of their karma, which is advantageous to them getting more of their free will, more of their power, more of their knowingness and, and better experiences, if they go after resolving, they will start gravitating here more. So more people... Uh, and versions of self are coming here and getting in the game to add to the, ch- uh, with their chess moves. Uh, so I've been mostly seeing like, like on the news report that now a lot during this period of time, there is way more worlds with different existences and realms and, uh, uh, that are bilocating their realms to earth. So that she's syncing up her tree of life of realms to those and creating some remedy process for experience where souls that have the clearance to interact with those realms can also go there and get in the game of chess moves for their resolution, which then culminates in ours. Because we're like all these different species lined to one. So it would be really hard to resolve our drama before they resolve their drama because they have less lines and lineages of DNA to worry about as back doors into keeping a certain dark chess move of manifestation that isn't what we want in the future um, because it's it's inconsiderate and and it's selfish you know does that make sense yep (laughs) so uh, so indeed the Galactic News Network presents our GNN astral reporter Sean Bond we um so it's uh there's a couple of questions coming in um from Tim Good in Australia. Hey Sean, can you comment on the sightings of triangular craft around McDill Air Force Base at the time of Irma approaching this week? Oh at the oh, time where, of Irma was the airport? Uh McDill Air Force Base. I don't know where that is. Um at the time of Irma approaching this week <laughs> I have a um, I'll try I don't I don't I haven't heard that name before but uh, um if if you say it in chat that'll be great but um I'll, I'll try to tune into it uh okay. let's see for example mostly of the, whenever I tune into triangular aircraft it's usually military uh human secret space program uh let's see uh, is that like uh it's I'm assuming it's because it has to do with Irma that it's near the coastline or something um in Texas or Florida or whatever. Um, anyway. So yeah, I can't really comment uh the most accurate until I know where it is exactly. Uh what was it called again? 
All right. Uh, I'm just looking at it. Magdilla Air Force Base remains closed until further notice. <laughs> it's just like um, on Twitter. Uh, okay, so presumably, hang on, I'll just see if I can find its location. Um, Tampa, Florida. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was what I was getting, but I didn't want to, like, assume. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so, like, the hurricane in... Um, that uh when it is having to do with a base shutting down uh most of our our military uh, uh US's military is currently being spiritually invaded and dominated in whatever way shape or form you'd like to see that and in where most of the people at the bottom don't know what's going on and they tell just what they need to to keep them doing their job um and there's many factions that are trying to keep an influence of control in the military. So uh, Earth, besides what she's already doing and where they're located, this is just an, a plus to that where she's using the vortex to clear out not just above ground but underground because it links to a energetic vortex that can a, a pass through physical matter um, linked to the core of her being and her heart uh, that, like, clears out bases as well as, as creates an opportunity for auditing of them and their activity to see if they need to exist because bases are shut down all the time and then there are projects that I see where they keep trying to replant bases forward and backwards in time which if they, they you if it's negative time travel they're stealing the ability and authority and it, it breaks down all the time and people die and all these other same stuff but Sometimes they're able to get it passed for at least a temporary amount of time. They're going to try to put up a base in some way that's camouflaged and leads into the future in a way they're, they're observing predictive models in like, you know how, uh, I don't know how to put this in a metaphor, but like Earth is constantly going after her bigger problems first. So, She's not going to worry about every base of the planet at once, but she's going to strategically choose who want, who's stepping over the bounds too much and then making that as an example, even if they don't see it. It's, uh, she, she has many different, uh, contracted spirits on the planet that are involved in the, the clearing out process as well as inner earth civilizations that have the technology to do it more effectively, less bloody, or if it needs to be completely destroyed, she will cave it in. Uh, but you know, the, she'll see what is going on to create a best scenario based on all the different interactors in that event. If there's like sleeper cells that are in, that will be programmed to be rebellious, they might add to that chess move forward and backwards in time. So, like, everything that manifests on this timeline has so many layers to the influence in what is the last chess, uh, you know, what's the the greatest uh, authority in chess move and manifestation and what else is adding to that through the dark stealing energy to lessen somebody's influence or create an influence that... They, if they knew that their energy was being stolen, they wouldn't want that to happen. All, all these different things. Uh, so the bases aren't doing well. Uh, if it's having to do with that, I'm not tuning into ETs having to do with that or uh, inner Earth groups, though they are observing the hurricane quite a bit and they're showing up in lots of different cities. Um while people are paying attention to the weather. Um, though there are clouded places, so there's that strategic place where they don't even care. So it's it's all these different stuff. But the bases, they are losing lots of money, technology, and they're freaking out. But they still have energy to keep creating, but they have to choose what they create and what they're willing to give up, what they have to hold on to. Does that make sense? Right. So, 
it's you know looking at the uh the the their website you know you're right you know maybe there was something a bit nefarious going on un- underneath and maybe there's some other part that is being uh removed maybe there's a, if there's a underground base there that that's being dealt with as well mm-hmm. or something yeah you know. i'm getting uh, it's mo- the nefarious things about that were mostly technologically based like they're they're creating and oh they're t- they're taking reverse engineer stuff and trying to what is this Hmm. Hmm. Oh, it, it, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. They're, they're stealing lots and lots of energy from Earth, uh, through these technologies that they're setting up in multiple places. And they're causing great harm to her. And there's also AI linking technology. There's, Anyway, she, so she's taking she's taking these out, uh, and she's not she's going for some of the more mm, harmful weapons in the timeline, as well as not just the hurricanes, but um, strategic. If they can do in a way where almost nobody notices, because like the dark doesn't always know what the other parts of the dark are doing. Almost not at all. They don't tell each other. Um, they keep things secret. That's mostly based on how they operate. Yeah, that's so their MO. Some, some base can be completely annihilated, and if they can, uh, Earth uh, can make it quiet and them not notice, then that might add to her strategy. I see. So that's very interesting. So, more questions uh, from Lotus Eaters. Do, manif- do hurricanes manifest dimension? Dis- I'm, I'm, I presume dimensional displacement so i think that really that's what we're saying that a hurricane in one place time space um present uh could connect with a hurricane in another time space moment and yes. um things be exchanged like a, oh yeah, yeah yeah so um we've been you know i've been talking for a long time this is the time of the crossing you know, and it gets the the cross is like a pair of scissors. <laughs> it's just like slicing through. There's you know, no nothing nothing survives. Everything gets snipped in some way. Um and uh there's there's this enormous bifurcation. So I suppose uh that's exactly what we've been talking about or what I was talking about right at the beginning, you know, it was like what the hell's going on is um uh, some of us are being swept forward in the hurricane and some are being swept backwards in the hurricane. Could that be, hap- could that be uh, a way of putting it? Yes. Yes. So like, w- like the, the words that you've used can be applied to many different things that I see in our history. Like a greater form of it would be like what people describe as a harmonic convergence or whatever, where uh, realms cross and, Things migrate into other realms, like other species that come out of nowhere and then set up things like on the exactly. surface of Earth. Uh, that is something Earth is working towards manifesting. It seems to be uh, things stopping her from doing that in its fullest. So she is strategizing past that and seeing, like, like if someone that was really good at seeing into other worlds and using their eyes and uh, as a technology what like manifested in the domination control targeted their eyes to like get worse and worse and more myopic through like curses and all these different limiters like they they would then have to rearrange their strategy to um cope with that and then they can which which doesn't have to be entirely negative because it could put them into a new perspective that may even advance them even farther and then learn how to get past that blockage and then have it erupt outward and then re-manifest. Um, so like you, if somebody didn't have, uh, was blind, they would then use more of their other senses. So like earth is doing that with her other technology that she is able to use and amplifying that even more to create a, um, uh, Rube Gold- Goldberg kind of contraption of, uh, influence that hits another, uh, domino that, makes everything float 
into greater and greater place, and she's monitoring the entire thing based on choice points and everyone involved. It's very advanced, but, like, uh, everyone can kind of train their perception and uh, ability to process uh, multidimensionally and multitask-wise that, like, goes into it where you can train focus and multitasking to the level where you can do so many things at once where while doing things on the physical um, and then have them set up and go automatically and you can start uh, monitoring as they go and then checking up on them like a newspaper report. So that's, and that's a telepoth telepathic process. No, man, a telepathic process. Um, and it's like having a, like your, your, uh, uh, like a glass uh, display in front of you, these things are going on. You can see them, but nobody else can. Yes, you you can do that by projecting um, your energetic accumulation of. Uh, so you you will project energy from your uh, from your heart to your third eye and use it as a projector to see, dream it, feel around you. You can create switches and knobs and monitoring systems that can linked to other body technology that you send off to non-local places. Um, and you can read things about your own body, your other bodies, your other versions of yourself. You can actualize and uh, operate better in this reality by knowing more about it um, and have things come up as alerts if there's problems or if you use time as a technology, you can use precognitive abilities to get yourself out of the way of something harmful or, you know. Uh, and and you, we even have versions of herself that have branched off and become ma micro, macro expressions of, like, planetary bodies, uh, stars in collective consciousnesses, and we can link to them and share their perspective and trade back and forth in commerce. In like an evolutionary process, um, there's a lot you can you can do. Everyone can do with their technology they have. So, like so underused. Uh, yeah, exactly. And this is this is like what um, the Agenda 21, for instance, is trying to minimize in humans. That we've got it all, but they're offering a kind of machine, uh, sort of a, a steel and plastic imitation version of something that we've already got. It's like offering us an electric violin when we have a Stradivarius. Right? That's a good way of saying that. Um, yeah, they're trying to mimic it and then like create a hard, or create a hard environment to look for other alternatives and make it seem like the shit sandwich that they're offering is the best thing that is existing at the moment and they're limiting like your work like uh your uh, radios and stuff from coming up on search engines and it's pretty it's it's pretty screwed up what they're doing and censoring and they're just uh allowing to happen um but like people if they have the the resonance to it they'll find it. it's all about keywords and searching and you can create uh everyone has like a multi-dimensional puzzle they have to put together that's like linked to their spirit and like what pieces they have, what they need, what they have to reclaim, uh, or what need cleaning, uh, unblocking, all, all this kind of stuff. And then everything starts flowing more and more and amplifying. And, uh, like we, we can still, like it's, we can still operate. Like these are designed to operate even if it's bogged down to the lowest level. And then everyone can reclaim it no matter what's happened to you or everything can technically be healed even if like a spirit is pulverized to dust, there's processes to heal that. Um, or like plants that are in a coma or something, and if they're interacting with this drama, imagine what happens when they start retaking all their energy back. And uh, um, amplifying their chest move for remedy, and the beings that are interacting with them and the material that is, came from the surface such as like with what's happening with Mars and uh, the moon, where they're bringing more of their 
ability to take back what's theirs and then uh, take back their bubbles of reality one after another until everything like culminates in a qu- equation for the best possible level of remedy that they perceived into the future uh, and <laughs> give that some words um, yeah yeah it's about yeah. it's about the creating the win-win situation um yeah. that even the baddies get what they need rather than the punishment yeah, that's, that's like another thing that, that's like happening in the, the, um, the newspaper. Um, the moon is amplifying activity in re, re, uh, retaking usurped control over her realities, mostly in the dream time. So like in how, if you, like that also goes in the hurricane too, uh, uh, I'll go back into that. So you can see the, like, uh, I, I also go into teaching, um, he, how to heal planets, especially with those that have planet healer DNA and have that as a mystery school and can lock that and work with the land of their area and then with other worlds that they're interacting with to help their lifetime and as well as they learn lots of things all at once. But you can see like the planets having their own system of energetic nodal points like meridians, chakras, um, a material matter that can program mechanical processes like the blood or flow of liquid, um, energetic fields uh, around them in different bandwidths that can be filed into like like uh, systems like uh, we went over there before, like dreaming body, astral body, etheric body, light body, uh, emotional body, different types of elemental essences that you could also describe as dimensions because um, that's the territory of, like, for instance, Earth has different dimensional bandwidths that she separates for different types of beings and their expression of energetic consciousness. Like, they'll some will have... You, you can, you can, like, oh, this, this, this is more prevalent in water energy or fire, earth, air, water, darkness, uh, void, um, ether, or, or even the different combinations of elements like, uh, plant energy dimension or whatever. And that, like, layer over realms, which I describe as, like, uh, you could see it as, a realm has, like for Earth, also has a surface, inner Earth, and multiple dimensions in it. It's like a territory and bandwidth that you can change on the channel, and then they kind of, they can link to each other in uh, uh, ways to travel through them, through already set up places on the Earth, energetic systems, the chakra points. Uh, there are even technology built over them to amplify their uh being's ability to travel through them and some like the natural uh energetic portals like the wind and the water portal that goes into the hurricane to make portals that can transport physical matter though the majority of the portals being used with hurricanes is energetic and layers a hurricane over all those dimensions at once because you can also see the hurricane itself as having a body or structure like you could apply to a planet and existing has a body for the dream time, the astral, the the fire dimension, earth, air, the, all the different parts that are layered over top of each other and can interact and bleed over. It depends on their technology and what they have right, in clearance or what they st- stole and whatever. And it it it. it brings us like if you know how to create a spiritual hurricane like that will teach you how you can bring that around yourself through like qigong and music and creating a spiritual hurricane to do the same effect of sweeping up all the darkness and demons and things that are entangled with us around us and audit it all to bring it to remedy and then you can make more advanced systems upon that um uh, and the hurricanes and all the weather patterns can be healed, so you can then monitor their state of being 
And if, if you're like, for instance, shit, I'm trapped in this hurricane. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get out. I, uh, you can probably do something by communicating with Earth and where is the best advantageous to place to be at this time. What can you do? What are your best options? Have precognitive ability to see into the future for like what's the likelihood of fatality or harm or if it's flooding like i should get to higher ground which uh like is going to be less what place on land is most likely to not be impacted by land and you can work with earth to go to those places of like uh, strategic refuge during the hurricane if, even if it's passing right through uh so these are like some bigger ones so that i it's going to be hard if you're wanting to re redirect in another place because you become aware of all these other lines of influence and why it's being directed to those places in the first place to even stop it. But um, especially with the smaller ones and the ones that you can ask if they need or are required to go through a certain location, if they can, they can change their course a little bit or whatever. Uh, lessen their activity at a certain point when they're they're traveling past, um, and then ramp up again. Uh, it's it's about interacting with also the consciousness, the collective consciousness of the hurricane, and all that's involved, and what they're willing to do because they can pick up things and drive them into uh, like pe they can drive pencils into trees. They can gent gently pick up something and then place it down gently so like a cow that somehow survived or something uh or they can transport it through time like we're not in kansas anymore same thing with yeah I, you know it does you have been uh causing me to think of the wizard of oz as uh <laughs> you know tornadoes bringing i mean it brought uh rescue to the to the land because it was her house that landed on the bad witch yeah yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. strategic. Yeah. Uh, it's like, didn't need to do that, but it did. Like, it made, <laughs> um, but, you know, that's a movie. Mm. But, uh, yeah, that, you know, these, these can tra traverse realms. It depends on the spirit contract, who is needed. Like, um, but, like most people, when you enter the super soldier community and you talk to them about what's going on, it will, t about the more reoccurring trauma and, uh, the, the bad part of it, which is absolutely exists. It's there and it needs to become aware of. That's why it's the most prevalent topic because when you're involved in that, the things you want to take care of first are the things you need to heal, the traumas and all that. So that's why I understand. But it also needs to be emphasized that everyone on the surface of Earth uh, or inner Earth or all these other places are involved in the chess moves of the planet and are in either alignment or disalignment. And even if they're in a disalignment, they are required to do th things at times for Earth. She has missions. She she sends them to different places. She biolocates them energetically to do th uh, things. She is like super soldiers all over the place in different species that are protecting her planet. She's very protected, but like she still has to hold space for the dark because of all these different um, things they're doing in forced entanglement, dead man switch hostage situations with those that she, she wants to keep a hold of and not to suffer. So she's like, uh, keeping going with her suffering to end suffering of a lot of other beings in, until uh, she formulates a strategic move to end it and then move past and then go up more and more. And she's constantly raising her frequency and you can definitely feel that as it, it boils down to us and, and things that meet, that come up on our dashboard of responsibility, such as pain or feeling states, depression, and even in, um, energetic influence of both positive light and influence from our higher selves and other lives that come over to us to change choice points in how our reality manifests and who we interact with, um, as well as why we came together in the first place or if we're forming together teams or if the resolution process has reached a peak and then uh, there is better choice points that open up when new opportunities uh, such as what you're going through 
uh, come into perspective where you're going to run into new types of people and you're going to have new choice points to you and new levels of unpredictability that may bring you to an even better state of reality than you existed at. Depends Smile, because things can then get better. Shall we have a tune? It's the top of the hour. Let me see. Have I got anything? What did I put here? Oh, I got uh, Everybody Hurts by R.E.M. No, I'm not going to put that one on. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, God, sorry. Oh, well, how about a nice, this, this has no words, but it's a beautiful tune. It's one of Dave's favorites as well. Uh, this will, Little Wing by Stevie Ray Vaughan. No, it's not, it's not gonna play. Alright, not that one. <laughs> Alright, um, <laughs> well, in that case, I'm just gonna have to grab one of the tunes that's on my desktop, which is, alright, okay. This is an interesting one. This is Leland James by called and this is a tune called Blue. This one's called Blue. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Welcome back. Ah, it's now the eleventh of September in UK. Uh just past midnight here on the old Atlantean Island here. Ah. So, uh, tonight we're on with Sean Bond, ever beyond with Sean Bond, breaking, breaking the glass ceilings of, uh, the dimensional veils. And yeah, as you say, you know, it's like as an, uh, as above, so below kind of events going on, um, where things are being moved to their right place. Is that right? Yeah. And, um, so like, uh, with, some of the uh, the the realms that are uh, bilocating from other worlds to Earth, as well as other planets in the solar system, part of their remedy process. And there's also other ways that they they will interact in commerce with other planets in pocketed, protected, and quarantined realms if they're in their right and pr- uh, proper place and strategic and clearance crossovers of that in. Uh, like the beings that are traveling between them. Uh, some of them are uh, overtaken and asking Earth for healing and remedy by locating them to us. So they're not in the, the best shape uh, that they could be and will add to our overall equation. Um, but usually they have already, especially with why they are here if they have already entangled in some way in some DNA technology or lineage or whatever they're doing and the reason for it. So I'm, tr- I'm trying to find a way to put it all into a box, but it's, you know, the, so yeah, like, it's got uh, lots of spo- sp- springy uh, legs and things that can't, you can't get it in there. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Like your time travel and all the other little, rule breakers or whatever the so like beings essentially when you're you're wanting to interact with these realms and resolve them you got uh it can culminate in the more easier to understand subject matter of remedy such as oh this realm has protectors to it and they have a quarantine held around it and it's usually their energy uh or whatever their various manifestations of themselves physical or uh, energetic are getting their energy stolen and that's being used to mimic their authority so things that don't have the authority to traverse them can penetrate through them and they'll usually set up grids of um, domination to keep that going and then use an energy battery that they have set up in those realms to keep an invasion process to the other realms and incursions on their timeline uh, so that can be part of the remedy for beings that are involved in that, because I do track that back as some of the things that bleed up on the people's dashboard for depression with other, like, versions of themselves that are getting lots of energy stolen and attacked, and it kind of, like, uh, bleeds over them because they need help from somebody that is available or is able to or able to seek proper help, um, which I can do. The And also 
usually will also do, have to do with the individuals in the realm. The sacred nodal points, like if the realm you can see as an entire uh, other layer of reality to a planet, it could be completely different. It could be even uh, near destroyed. It could be a water world. It also depends on the clearance of what you're allowed to see in the sky based on what stars you're allowed to tune into, what DNA lineages are there, are all of them different, uh, and what star is each being perceived. Um, and planetary bodies that usually have a layer in that reality that, like, sinks up. It's really interesting, um, like the, the sun, or if there's even... I've, I've, so, I've seen some that are, like, completely different and have, like, multiple uh, stars or uh, uh, different numbers of planets. It's... it's Anyway, I'm tra- yeah, no, the, all the little springy legs. The um, uh, let's see. Uh, also, like sacred objects, abilities that are being stolen, like portal technology and um, the time travel will also bleed back in that remedy. And once the bigger problems can be taken care of, to where the bubble of reality can be fully quarantined. Everything seems to go oh, much quicker in resolution to that realm, uh, and stops being a hellish realm. Like if it's if it's it's highly quarantined, and even that doesn't like keep it from bleeding over to other realms in our existence. And how our body links to the Earth's tree of life with our tree of life. Um. And yeah. Anyway, so like. What's happening a lot with your other question, um, the breakups, as my higher self has been able to formulate, I've been seeing a lot with my clients recently, where more parts of the system that we have on this planet, the matrix, the, the, the original concept for the construct of quarantine that brings us all into full remedy for every being here at a faster pace, where they evolve quickly or as Andrew Bartis will call it the galactic ascension machine um, th- those are being audited at a higher level and it seems to be culminating to all the different higher nodal points uh, of what the dark system wants to keep hold of as a last resort of power to keep their their system going as long as possible and what they are strategically um, focused on. So, like, that is more exposed. So, like, what's for, like, I can tune into you uh, if if I'll, I'll be as vague as possible so I don't, like, harm other versions of yourself. <laughs> yeah, go. Uh, <laughs> so, like, a lot of my clients also, like, we we have it doesn't always like like of this version of you let's see yeah so this branch that 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 culminated in this existence version of you this spark of your light body that connects to the stream of consciousness of light that connects to other streams of light of existences you have in other realms dream realms uh planets solar systems etc the your your tree you can track back going back to when a branch uh uh separated from another branch that connected to the experience of the Syrian B uh an Orion Anunnaki type uh expression. A lot of that is being resolved now. Uh and they're going through lots and lots of stuff. If I were to even go into their subject, which is a vast subject into itself um which i I'm, I'm fine with doing but like it needs a lot of clarification there's a lot of muddiness they they even create uh propaganda so you yeah know, sure and, and because the, this is one of the things um is that there's a lot of conflicting information you know serious is it good is it bad which ones are good which ones are bad is that you know uh, some people say that serious there was a, a there's like a kind of con, uh, what's the word? There's a community of different beings all kind of hung out there. Absolutely, there's like so many different lineages of DNA as well as light body spirit DNA that like interact with Sirius. It's like a hub of interaction and travel, um, similar to ours because they also hold 
different expressions of seed, uh, D, like DNA uh, libraries. Um, some of them have been gone, gone through wars and destructions, but they have still them in uh, other protected realms and all other stuff, if, if, even if they've been destroyed. Um, so every species, uh, again, I'll go back to, they all have light, dark, and neutral, neutral branch, branches and factions. Uh, they will have a system of mind control and what they believe, how they express themselves, attitude, healing, what they'll go into, what they won't touch, what they'll avoid, um, lots of different programming. And it's very interesting to track back their habit patterns, uh, uh, the remedies for them and how they even bleed over into the now and our expressions. So for like that breakup scenario, um, Currently, I'm seeing a huge amplification of the Orion uh, reptoids that mm, are doing a lot. They, uh, and how they interact with the Alpha Draconin. And they seem to be going through a shitload of rebellions. And they're getting stabbed in the back. And they're getting angry. And so they're doing a separation or a breakup. In a lot, I'm not going to say blanket term because uh, uh, some of them are still working together and they, some of them have to for diplomatic reasons and all these other reasons that come up uh, based on what they made in choice points before and how they're trying to maintain themselves. Even if it's a shaky un, unity process, even Alpha Draconans have factions that are uh, positive or being like if you're you you have a very high up version of yourself that you that is bleeding over to you as well as the people around you uh like their versions of self that are going through these traumas of um uh battles and interactions rebellions and having to create new life changing choice points for how they interact with other species uh uh and that 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 bleeding over to you um so you have a, am I allowed to say, let me, let me just ask this before I, I go into any version of you. Okay. Um, so when I look, uh, I will n not usually go into the fear, uh, agenda thing with N Nibiru where it will hit us again. It doesn't need to at all. Uh, it's being like beings are trying to manifest it back into this reality to cause it a destruction event. Like the, the, it happened to us in our previous history. And for some reason that could, if it was more known about that would happen, it would, could be prevented at that point in time. There was seemed to be a, a need for it. And the, the, the planetary body has a drive in it and it can, uh, traverse slingshot from solar system to solar system and teleport. So it's been teleported as well, but it keeps, it's not near. I see when I tune into it, I do it, it, get it exists. It has like a long history of how it's traveled from different places. It, it travels with a dwarf star, like, mm, mi, like mini solar system that uh, links to our, in, the micro aspect of our binary uh, solar systems. And there's even more than that uh, in the, the planetary bodies that dance around with this solar system, as well as how it links to a, a cosmic dance between our main central part of our sun for that. I don't, there's not very many words to describe this, but like how that links to like Sirius's cent center sun. And then that dances with each other. And then, how that those link to other systems like in the Pleiades and that spiral. Uh, anyway, so and the, how they all travel through the galaxy. Um, so there, there's like I see a binary star system that has planets in it more than just that planet, and they seem to have collected planets that travel together in different ways that I can't really put into a box, but they don't need to do a destruction event. Anyway, so like they are going through a remedy process. Each of the spirits involved with that, like you would tune into with Anu and uh, Anki and the, the other more 
recognized through our culture beings, they exist as multidimensional beings too. So they have many different versions of themselves. They branch off in many existences. I've seen some of their existences incarnate into human as well as other remedy processes that they have. Some of them have been forced to have sparks of them put into the game and some of them have been like split from each other, like uh, third dimensional and upper aspects. Some of them have like some of those split aspects have had to leave based on periods of time of auditing. Some of them had to stay like the reptoid factions that like some of them are aware of who they are in spirit that they're not the only body that's expressing that existence. Like Anu has many different versions of himself. Some are on planet here and some are not here that are over there as well as other places. So it, and not all of them agree with each other and they're, they're formulating strategies on what their next step is. Uh, but they're being, uh, required to resolve their issues, which they bring a lot of drama to the table and parts of the domination control system that needs to be taken out, uh, taken care of. Uh, so you can tune into that and you have like a version of yourself that ex- uh, you have more than this, but one of them is bleeding over to you now is one that's in a high place of authority in some of the other planets in that solar, that I guess I'd call it a solar system, but you know, the, and they're getting very rebellious towards the Draco. So you can formulate a strategy with your higher self and all your united versions of you to see that as an opportunity to bring that expression of you and all the beings that are working with them or under them because they are in a place of authority to bring about their resolution faster and taking back all their soul and energy, becoming sovereign again because they... They, beings at that level have ego too and they ignore things and, um, I don't know, there's a lot. I can't, I can't really sum it up and try and- Stuff to happens to, <laughs> to them. Uh, they're only human after all. Is right. that, that's yeah. the thing. It is that, you know, they're not gods, <laughs> they're, they're humans, humans, you know, and they're just as human as we are, but just we're smaller. Or shorter lived or something. Yeah, the the mistakes can be made, free choice is part of the experience, part of being a human. Other ET species have as well, and they don't escape by trying to pretend they're gods and stuff. And they're also dealing with that, too, and the karma and the beings that are trying... Because, like, there are AI intelligences that are, while a majority of, like, their multidimensional self it has had to... Like, some of them, I'm not saying all of them, have had to leave... uh, that were like a point of focus for like prayer and working with other beings. Some beings have hijacked that and have become that being some AIs that are amplifying that they're, they're pretending to be God and working through different technology and that links invasively with species that are in that form of domination. Um, but some of that is true because, you know, uh, sometimes they are that be the being that they're saying and they're linked to that spirit. And, it, and I'm again, it's, I can't put it just into one type because there's so many ways that they've had different, uh, scenarios happen to them. Um, though I, I, they have to deal with a lot. So they're holding up a lot. I do not envy what they're holding up in amount of darkness being projected at them, but they do need to heal it. Otherwise it affects and bleeds over to us all and it holds up everything. So they're kind of being forced into that. And I guess we're also being forced to make uh, choice points here as well. That um, lines up with that. And I'm trying to use better vocabulary, <laughs> but I'm not doing great. Let's see. So, uh, hurricanes are also freeing up some of the key dominated parts of the false dream time grid with the sacred geometry systems, the harvesting systems, the things that get us into a grid 
that is like a distraction from what we could be perceiving in the dream time. Uh, those are freeing up with the hurricanes, and they're they're doing a lot of stuff in the dreams. And Earth is going through some upgrades, dream time wise. So I've also been hearing people a lot have been getting really powerful HD dreams of late. So how's your dreams been? I was just trying to remember. There was one that I that I woke up with uh, uh, just a day or so ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> it was the train dream. It was like I had all these bags. And, uh, getting off a train and I had loads of bags and I was trying to get off the train and like some bags were still on the train, some of them falling down the, uh, gap between the train and the platform. And some bags were just, you know, I was able to carry them across and, you know, that, then I left some, my hat at the beginning of the, of the tr- front of the train with the driver and I was like, like, it, yeah. It, <laughs> it's very symbolic. I'm sure, I'm sure. And not only that, but the gap between the train and the platform when I'm standing on the platform is incredibly wide. Um, you know, I, you know, I can actually climb down there easily and get the bags out, but it was, you know, it was a very, uh, you know, it, it wasn't a na- that normal narrow gap, which is why they fell down. So it's just like things that are not expected to happen. Um, uh, a sense of urgency, um, a, uh, a, a sense of potential loss of things, but you have to carry on. And you can come back and get them later, or you can wash your hands later. You know, sometimes here's here's my handy hint, handy hint for the evening. Um, sometimes you just and the, you got no gloves, and you have to do something like you know you you have to handle something bad. <laughs> you have to you have to pump the sewage or something. You, I always say to myself, I can always wash my hands afterwards. Okay. <laughs> So it's it's that sort of thing, you know. You might have to go through some shit, but you can always have a shower afterwards. Um, that's it's no reason just just getting dirty. Yeah, mind the gap. Right. So so what does that tell you, Sean? What what are my um, higher selves doing? Well, that's like a symbolic message. Like each of those bags, you can tune into. Uh, do you, do you? Uh, have like any recollection on like what they may have contained, but like also you can t- uh, tune into them symbolically as well as energetically and what information they're carrying. Uh, and one was a burlap like bag. Making- I remember that that one was a kind of a burlap bag about the size of a shopping bag. Um, that you know had a soft uh, cro- cloth rope handle, cotton rope handle. Um, I remember that. Um, but. Uh, yeah. Anyway, go and so so I can. I, and this is a thing. Another thing that um, you can go back if you got a really vivid dream, you can take a meditation. I've done this before, and it's quite incredible. I I, use, I just use my dousing, um, dousing finger to say, uh, just if I'm if I'm going off, let go. Uh, and so I, I I get this kind of magnetic pull between my, my fingertips. Um, and I know I'm still on the right track and it kind of hel- holds me onto the right track as well. Um, and so that I can then ask questions about a dream that I had, uh, a few hours ago. And, um, and I found myself being able to go back into the dream and being shown different aspects of that dream and to, um, to unfold what it was about, which uh, this is, this is, I'm talking about another time, um, and another dream, but, uh, yeah, very interesting. We can go back into dreams. Yes, yeah. You, you can create the operating system internally where you project yourself into that dream realm or that simulation internally, externally, or biolocated, whatever, how it operates with you, as well as your tuning. You can, you can re-enter the same dream again by tuning back into that dream body that was expressing itself there. It might, if it's still there, it might have moved on. We're dreaming all the time. You have multiple dreaming bodies that you send to non-local places and you tune into them like channels on a TV. And so you can also do that in meditation where you're, you're connecting that to your experiential body and your, your pineal gland and your ability to see in, without eyes and use your dowsing finger, your muscle testing, kinesiology, or wh- whatever abilities and biofeedback for the oracle, the self, to be the um, 
the bowling ball the bowling ball alley rails to keep it from going in the gutter for what you're trying to access in visualization so you can experience that dreaming body and get better at tuning into it as well as defining what it is get information come back to you to eventually where you could just walk down the street and just have one eye focused on the the physical reality and then one eye experience in the dream reality and what you're doing there and be able to influence the narrative of what you learn, what you gain in information, what you're doing, because there's missions and all kinds of scenarios of dream besides just symbolic. The symbolic ones will usually go into many different bleed overs of what you're doing all at once into a amalgamated equation that you can then tune into each parts and pieces as if it's um, the menu for a DVD player, but like every button is like a symbolic representation in, in that manifested dream, like every bag. Uh, it's like filled with things and you're like choosing which, which stuff you carry across the gap when you, you make that, that leap, um, and what you leave behind and what you don't, you, you feel necessary to leave behind or, uh, okay, you're okay with leaving behind and also feeling the weight off that shoulders because they do, uh, bog you down and, uh, hold, some different types of things may hold you back. Depends on what type of bag and representation and parts and pieces to that. Not say everything, but like, um, there's a freeness to letting your stuff go. And, um, and so, uh, it's also a symbolic representation of your energetic bodies in how they're healing and letting go of negative baggage. And uh, there's, I'm trying to blanket term it again, but there's many different aspects in that you can tune into with that, like things that you're like doing extra solar to, because you have dreaming bodies that are engaged with other planets, um, especially seeming to do with this in karmic resolution. Uh, anyway, so, <laughs> I hope that an- is this like a, a kind of. Bit. I've had a feeling of like a planetary balancing. Yeah. Kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You do have planet version of yourself, so that, that also bleeds in. But, like, for, I'll, I'll give you like a, a number example. Let's see, um, let's see how you would, you would ask your, your super computer technology or body, how many dreaming bodies have I, was I born with? And then you can like, let's see, um, and then how much were you mainly engaging with physically here that you can tune into on a regular basis and aren't secret missions as well as, uh, ones that have been stolen or, uh, reprogrammed or the dream body 18. autopilot hijacked or, or energy stolen and all these different systems of sovereignty and lucidity and ability to perceive backward and forwards from the physical body to that energetic aspect and have a greater and greater experience and and like set up setting up intentions and what you want to do and then stating them every night and challenging the dream body autopilot for whatever on um self-defeating programs would be put into it that the system wants to suppress our dreams and so like you're so let's see uh you're, you're engaging a lot of dreaming bodies off world. So you were born with, yeah, I'm getting like three, 30,000. Most of them are off planet, but like then like going down to what, how many you're using, uh, now currently like 101 and some of them have been stolen. Would you like to, uh, do a mission with me? You don't have to really do anything here. I'm going to mostly be doing it with your higher self to go back and take all your dream bodies from whatever sold them, if a demon or system or whatever. I like the sound of that. I'll have those. They sound yeah, useful. Do- Please. Yeah, I'm setting off and doing that now. Let's see how many are stolen on Nope. Uh, some of them are. <sighs> Captured in devices. Let's see. Okay, like I'm, I'm gonna 
Reclaim 2000 with you, and also like some of them are like like 120 you're gonna be mostly dealing with, but the other ones are gonna continue with secret missions that they're doing uh, before they got captured. And like like for instance, this will help free up you and your ability to dream and how much energy you have in the day because beings will steal parts and pieces of ourselves, go off to a location it's hard to get them back or whatever, and then siphon energy from you from a distance as well as dump things onto you. And they'll also do this like with lots of various people that have like haunting scenarios or like really anyone that's like big targeted, they'll try to take a part and piece and then then use that also to influence them on the timeline by bombarding them with negative energy during a strategic point of choice point to change it for a worse or whatever. So this will help. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about that, but we're doing it, it, it now. So that'll be good. And people can do this and sometimes they do this naturally, especially if they've been trained or they're good, really good spiritual warriors in, in other lives and they'll be uh, fighting and helping people, saving people in the dream time, doing lots of missions. It's really interesting how that bleeds over. Well, so... Oh. I only thought about 18. (laughs) (laughs) So, um... Okay, another thing on the galactic news, whatever. The, the, um, the solar system's quarantine, which is more expanded than people know with the nine planets. It's got a lot of asteroid belts, it's got 66 planets, it's got a fuckload of moons, and like a lot of really ancient technology floating around. Um, there's a quarantine field around it held by spiritually in many different layers and aspects as well as physically and is protected by other species as well as we have like a secret space program to it. But like, you know all about that, but um, there it's been increasing the uh, protection against negative uh, backdoors into this solar system has been decreasing and has been culminating to just the ones they really want to keep uh, and maintain as well as they try to create new ones all the time. Um, that seems to be doing better now. So that helps a lot because all these things that are being projected into this solar system to create a chess move from a distance are being deflected and dealt with before it reaches us. Um, but some of it also has like interesting ways where it passes through, such as through spirits uh, that have existences in the game and outside of the game. And those that can perceive this solar system uh, is, it seems to be cracking down more on it's very, it, so many beings have an interest in what's going on here. And it's also kept to a degree of secrecy where some species don't even know fully what's going on here. And they completely underestimate uh, the solar system and Earth. So, you know. uh, They're the ones that read see, the uh, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that says, mostly harmless. <laughs> right. That's a great definition, too. Uh, <laughs> mostly harmless. Um, well, uh, it originally it was back. harmless. <laughs> but <laughs> since Ford Prefects has been here, it's it's mostly harmless. <laughs> Um, let's see, ha, the next, uh, so I'm, I'm going to tune into some more, uh, news until you want to stop talking or whatever. Let's see, uh, but, uh, Before we go there, um, are you able to do this, uh, in front of people or for people, um, or even on a regular basis? Do you, do you have your own radio show? I don't have my own radio show, but I, I'd love to do that 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 like helped me a lot um so if i if somebody wants to do that with me absolutely contact me um i'd like to get more and absolutely i can do this like uh right from stream go into the moment and figure out what's going on i can do it for the individual i can do it for the plants um i have a 
communication with them. Uh, there's many different forms of telepathy. Human telepathy is hard to manifest because it's got a lot of white, white noise and things trying to stop it from manifest. But there's like way easier beings to communicate with, such as the planet source, uh, very telepathic beings, as well as plants, elementals. They are older forms of telepathy that can be have their own bandwidth on the radio scaling process of age of different forms of telepathy that can be perceived by the heart and then processed in the brain. Um, and, and there are like a network of communication systems for each species that have everything they've thought of to make that better. So, and, and it has clearance processes. It's like, oh, you don't have the code to the server. You're not allowed to listen or all this stuff. So we, we can get updates all the time. Uh, why would you like to do something like that? Well, uh, according to Vanessa, we want Sean Bond here. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So, like, um, let's talk. yeah, okay. well, so let's say, come on folks, let's show him we have a place for his regular show right here. So, uh, uh, I would, um, I would ag- agree with that. So if you're, if you're interested, uh, and, uh, we can, we can find you at least a, a, a monthly slot. Certainly. Sure. I'd love to. That, that'd be awesome. Let's do it. That'd be good. Um, Monday nights. Where, where do you stay? Where do, where do you live? I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it gets cold in the winter, but it's it's pretty nice in the summer. Um, oh, and there's so much to do here. There's so many like energetic nodal points. There's like things with the land, the Native Americans, the inner Earth civilizations. There's all kinds of cool s- stuff. I mean, there's a lot of drama too, and there's a lot mm-hmm. of system taking over. But you know, every everyone's got that. So like that's also something that I like to talk about because I've been going around. Uh, to the different, uh, Native American Indian burial grounds that are like, have like structures built on them. And I've been finding remedy process for them. So they become like a very powerful nature spirit to the, the environment. And also there's like, you can, you can find the chakra points and they, I, I organize them in oct- octaves from like lower end spectrums that are almost found everywhere, like meridians and crossing points to greater strategic places of interaction if you would also see it with a body like each of these kind of places like a access terminal for psionic interaction and programming and other stuff that you can input you can do that with a body too um to resolve it and they take on a lot of drama and there's the collective consciousness around those areas sorry i went off topic oh, that's all right i just uh posted a uh a page from the chat room here just to uh show you the appreciation you're getting from the chat rooms. So, uh, yeah, it'll be nice. We'll, we'll talk about, uh, getting a show together. And, um, uh, like I said, um, we've got, uh, at least a once a month shot, slot that, uh, you could fill. Wonderful. Awesome. Yeah. And you said I, I live, don't, I don't live very far from Jessica. I, I'd love to meet up with her too. Um, uh, we have to do it, uh, a, uh, chat, a multi-dimensional chat. A round table. Excellent. That would be marvelous. Yes. And, uh, good old Boston. Uh, yeah, home of MIT. Um, did you have a, a, a <clears throat> yeah, fringe. Okay. Fringe. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, you've seen fringe, haven't you? I've seen some episodes. I'm actually literally about to rewatch it because my friends are like bringing it up all the time. It's like you're, you're going into fringe topics. You're going, we got to watch it. And it's like, yes, let's get it. Yeah. So well, you know, it's, me, it's going to go fucking buy it. It's, it's, yeah. um, it's actually the, uh, you know, it's based in Boston. It's a MIT, you know, uh, and they're talking about a, a giant rift in space time to another dimension that's being held open or being they are able to open it and close it at will and Damn. and things yeah. are being drawn across and um and it also very subtly refers to um uh paperclip scientists mm. Mm. yeah yeah i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to rewatch that and i'll i'll give you a whole report on like soft disclosure cuz i love going watching 
shows that go into soft disclosure and all the different little aspects of reality they bring out as a anchorage of understanding so that uh, like if if that's brought up i can tune into each of that as like does that species exist does that exist is that technology and like i'll usually find it and i'll have like a whole story behind it and like when it would happen on the timeline or where all these other dramas and what can be resolved in it if it if it is like a bleeding wound of existence like with a lot of dimensional rifts that aren't supposed to be open like in or like needed to exist based on what would have happened otherwise and are like maintaining themselves into the present such as the remuter triangle the other triangles around the planet like japan and a lot of very temporal anomaly zones uh it's like a, a it's a sig- it has a signature frequency of occurrence that can be tracked by the body and sometimes happens to the body and happens in different points of time like temporal dilation effect like in visitations or abductions or, or all that kind of stuff that they want to do things that won't interfere with your timeline here um and, or make it or, like or both like make it unnoticed so you don't realize it's happening or track it back or if they don't want to mess with your strategy <coughs> like like things will read our minds here and get our strategy so sometimes it's better to not remember them until the future uh, that's my excuse <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. I repeat myself I don't, you know, I don't know what I said and what I, you know it's it everything every memory is associated with the vibration of the space where I was in where I was there and it's not always continuous it's like one moment you're in a dream and um you know you wake up and you don't remember the dream that's because you're in a different vibrational space and the same is true of houses so each room has its own frequency and if you get used to the tuning of the room and you walk from one room to the other, your thought will be interrupted because it'll be on a different frequency. Mm. That's my explanation of why you walk into a room and don't remember why you walked in. <laughs> Tell Sean. That actually, yes. Uh, uh, there's also other reasons too, like uh, blame it on the weed or uh, <laughs> like something's taking our thought away. Um yeah, that, but that absolutely occurs, and sometimes we have like a weird thing that bleeds over multidimensionally that takes our processing away from what we were thinking about previously, and then we like sit there sometimes with deja vu or a bleed over, and like what's going on? Uh, why am I here? And then like we'll just like uh have an autopilot that goes back to oh why was I here? What what am I doing? Sometimes they'll also, like, it depends on the person. There'll be, like, delays in time or, uh, uh, it, like, loss of time or, uh, like, sometimes we get, like, a bilocated version of us self created in those moments and, uh, are currently doing something somewhere else that we can tune into. Depends on what it is. It's, it's the re, it's a lot of the reasons for, us not remembering at this period of time, which we will in the future more so, uh, what we're doing in these missions is because uh, of how much the dark is trying to make predictive models for us by scanning our thought forms <coughs> so they can counter chess move things. And we don't want to do harm to the ones we love that we're interacting with on those tangent timelines that we're, you know, dealing with. <laughs> And I, I find that often if I if I tune into like an extra secret mission, then I can risk everyone involved. So I, I don't I, I will usually ask if I'm allowed to talk about it as well as I'm allowed to know about it ultimately if it's like really not supposed to know it. But I will often find myself starting these situations like when uh like how you said or there's like a, a certain vibration or a stop in my thought process, like something big happened or like I get a, a a message on the dashboard or a telepathic text message or my legs start vibrating on the bed. And I'm like, what, what, what's going on? 
<laughs> or uh, like you ever jolt out of the uh, when you're sleeping, like for no reason. <laughs> All the time. All the time. That can be many things. Like sometimes the dream body slammed back into the body or visited or by location or upgrades or something negative. It depends on what's the, the, who's involved, the motivations. Uh, is there a higher self allowing it or is it like the, is it an incursion? But not to put people in fear. You can stop incursions. People can, we have, we have a lot of more power than we're told. Let's see, uh, I'll so, tune into some other stuff uh, while you're talking. Yeah, well, I, while we're talking, um, do you have a website? Yes, thank you. Uh, my website is silvercordss.com. I'm also on Facebook and YouTube. It's, it, under Silver Cord Spiritual Science. And if you want to get a hold of me, contact my, uh, um, uh, executive assistant, um, Mary, uh, at M-O-K-O-R-N at hotmail.com. Also, uh, have, uh, my business partner, KJ, who knows pretty much everything I'm doing and you can reach her as well. And we're, we're Gonna bring more people on the team. Uh, the team. She goes highly into SSP and secret space program stuff. So she's good at that. Um, and uh, oh yeah, we can pretty much uh, uh, heal most people. I've some like really bad people. I've been able to heal. I've got a lot of testimonies, but um, like like not like bad, like they're bad, but like very targeted, like super targeted beings. Um, as well as we can unlock people everyone can do what i'm doing i can, i've i've i set myself up this lifetime so i was blocked as much as everyone else like super blocked and then learned how to break through it and i, I can teach everyone how to do what i'm doing so hey so that would be a fabulous uh uh you know uh, aim for the show uh, a lot of the things that i i want on world spirit is is a kind of um healing by learning kind of thing because the more people understand the more they can learn that it's not a difficult thing you just haven't got the language or you've been shown the method um right and this is partly what what frank jordan does is what i'm trying to do is, is bring all these kind of people together um so that learning and healing is well it's all second ray ex- expression and uh so that's that's all within the in the in the uh, remit. So, thank you very much. So, it's, uh, we got about uh, ten minutes to go. Um, is there? Is, 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 do you have an and finally on the uh, galactic news report? Um, let's see. I'm gonna uh, formulate that real quick. For my hair. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't um, uh, get too big into the fear of the, all the destructions that are going on in the hurricanes. It's set to make the timeline better by getting rid of huge amounts of dense energy, negative systems, demons, and putting in their, them into the right proper places at, for their healing. And every time beings that are meshed in the system of domination control go through their healing processes, they every being that they're entangled with uh, go gets like weights lifted off their shoulder and they uh, of you know packages that they drop um, that didn't need to be there or do, don't serve them anymore and it affects the entireness of who they are so everyone's going through that now so take back your power um, figure out how to use it. And you'll make everything going uh, go way faster to what you imagine the world can be, instead of just figuring out what the system wants to manifest, and then taking back all your energy from them being able to make that, so that the future is not set in stone and it's continuously unpredictable. Um, majority of the destruction events are being minimized, and the things that need to, if like. 
uh, like, oh, I, I, uh, I, I got, uh, um, I accidentally, uh, hit my, uh, elbow on the end of a desk or something. And like, oh, well, you now have an opportunity to resolve all times you've ever done a similar wound to that part of your body backwards in t- and sometimes forwards in time. So that can all culminate in resolution. You can heal all versions of yourself. That's like similar for every little action that we go through in the, the manifest. So you can utilize that to make your reality better, get more points of your brownie points so you can have like the, the universe in alignment with you and not um, in the belief and separation that is working against us when it's mostly just sub factions that are animals in a corner that are losing their power. I hope that helps with people uh, going through the fear. That's uh, you know, it's it's a good thing that, that you're talking about it. I mean, and there's there's been a bit of a of a of a, a wave of that expression um, recently is like, let's forget about all those gods and goddesses. Let's forget about all those teachings and these meetings and get down to what we're feeling. And if we're, fe- if we're feeling fear, <laughs> it's hard to say with missing two. Uh, if you're feeling fear, feel the fear. Because that's most of your life. You've been running away from it. This is the... What I feel is a, a, a big deal in, in, um, addiction is yeah. the running away from something that you're afraid of. And Absolutely. when you don't get it, you turn into that which you fear to be. Mm. And, uh, so, you know, the cold turkey approach has its merits if you've got the time. <laughs> you know, if you don't have to do anything for a while. So, um, uh it's been um it's been a great show thank you very much sean now um, thank you so much we we have a uh, i don't know if you can uh quickly delve into this and maybe you need to ask if you have clearance for it um okay. but uh rem- i asked you about our friend sean david morton and whether he was uh whether there was a, a larger situation going on with with his situation, which is basically last, last week he was arrested. Um, and, uh, he's been, he's been busted for something that there isn't, is not, a, uh, is a victimless crime. And he's been arrested by the IRS police. And it's, it's a kind of kangaroo court feeling to it. Um, uh, mm. so, okay. uh, this is Sean David Morton, the, the, uh, the, the, the radio host who, uh, I've been producing. Uh, how about, how about I offer this? Um, Go ahead. Uh, I, I love what you're doing and thank you for the offer for the, the radio show that I'll, I'll absolutely be a part of. And, uh, I hope uh, this remedies, um, I'm going to scan for all the, the, the influences of causation to this based on the different departments of, um, uh, unsovereign, uh, I'm trying to, to formulate a uh, sacred neutral word to describe them. <laughs> uh, a- a- activists? People? <laughs> people? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I was talking about like the people that arrested him and that are part of the system. Yep, that, certain uh, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the ones that don't quite own themselves. So there are lines to influence that you can track back in a chess move that would culminate in this uh, influence for the apartment. Because they could have easily have arrested somebody else. Uh, instead of that, there, it's, this, this has causations to silencing, as well as putting fear and getting somebody to not do something by throwing them in a prison cell or whatever. Uh, so... I'm going to track back the apex predators that are involved in that chess move, as well as why, and like it also has to do with the viewership and the the, um, the people that are bravely holding up this space to to bring truth to many people, uh, and who doesn't want to hear that. So I'm gonna I'll, I'll, 
I'll I'll keep communicating with you, but this is a big thing that will usually if if especially if that guy's uh that you're you're talking about is a multidimensional being that's doing a lot and is able to do this physically without um beforehand breaking down or all the other drama that could culminate. Uh they are strong that I'm getting. Uh and what it takes to be able to incur on his timeline to allow that to happen, who he pissed off. And I'll see if I can find a remedy for that um, with your higher self and those who want to help me with that. Um, see if I can influence the the bureaucratic parts of this to to end in something that's beneficial for him to getting out of the situation and then keep it from happening again. Uh, will that help? That would help a lot. Thank you. Okay, cool. And um you have my uh my the support of my uh team as well. Awesome. Okay. So I'm getting three apex multidimensional predators that are involved in this, the Rothschilds, the, the, the Rockefeller, uh so the, the ones that like to incarnate into those lineages, a lot of the thirteen banking families or politicians or the placeholders to the system, they don't really they're not usually naturally allowed to incarnate so they're usually an invading force and can be perceived in that and then they can take over the already naturally existing light body sparks that exist in bodies and corrupt them by turning them into dark versions of themselves and stealing all their energy and sovereignty and authority so that they'll, they'll usually be part of that and their chess moves in wanting to silence you guys. I believe it mostly has to do with something that you'd be doing in the future uh, that they're trying to prevent. Um, so you can probably, and I, I believe this is a secret, so I'm not going to talk about that, uh, formulate what that is in your mind, and then by them doing this, make it worse for them, because they, they essentially did a, a big... Uh, Harm, they did harm yeah. to you and the entire network. So yeah, they they want to um they want to stop us making the TV show that eventually leads to their exposure. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Nothing much. <laughs> okay, so but yeah, uh, you know by then it'll be too late for them, so it's okay. All right. So we can then use this as a uh, point of focus for making the timeline better by becoming aware of. All the different lines of energy from us and other versions of us that they have stolen to allow this chess room manifestation because our energy has the biggest authority to manifest on our timelines. And then all the other factors involved in the sovereign, be- un- the, uh, the unsovereign beings that they already have in control that they're willing to chess move play with to get what they want and what it takes to maintain hold of those. And if they're stepping past their bound, their, the, the line, our line, as well as, uh, what they're allowed to do and Earth getting in alignment and wanting your radio show and, and the network to exist, uh, and what we can do with her in ultimate missions for the, you know, Making this better. And you, you, uh, definitely inform, uh, talk to me later about this situation so I get more in understanding for, for it and what we can do in finding solutions. Sure. And I tell you, you're spot on so far. Yeah, absolutely spot on. Yeah. Cause it's all about the secret space program, uh, the Nazis, uh, the real society, um, the whole history of it. Ooh, yeah. Oh, oh man. <laughs> so that, then that, yeah, that goes big into, what they have in programs and they want to keep from being exposed because the bigger, the biggest two players is the, the, the interplanetary corp and uh, corporate conglomerate, which is like all these different groups that have their own bakery, uh, breakaway groups that are, they're funding and all this stuff, but more so than not the, the third Reich Nazi parties and their breakaway groups. Cause they have all these different factions. They're not all they're They have light, dark and neutral though. The majority of them have, forms of mind control on them and uh they uh, like i believe you've gone to this i'm just like saying a broken record uh 
they have more interactions with a- ET groups than mo- the uh, in- uh, than the other uh, factions because uh, they were one of the first ones to hold up a big fortress for the human species that was more in selfish means, but still completed the, the, the need for a military to stop worse bullies from coming into our territory and dominating us even more. So, you know, they, they want to keep their, their holds over things. And depending on what you're going to talk about, they probably don't want to hear or, or, have other people here so that we can talk about that and then have a chess move for them with all our multi-dimensional parts and pieces and how they influence the different factions of them to come to their ultimate remedy which earth is also trying to work towards into the next seven generations sean bond it's been fabulous it's been golden thank you so much Your website once again? Yes, uh, silvercordss.com and subscribe to us, uh, like uh, our videos on YouTube. Uh, the more uh, popular we get, the more videos we'll put out for free information and stuff. Uh, Thank you Silver so much. Which will suck. Good night, everybody. Beyond. Beyond.